It's the National Football League on EA Sports, and we'll see who rules the skies in today's battle. It's the Philadelphia Eagles and the Seattle Seahawks, and it's kicking off next on Madden NFL 24. With the beautiful Puget Sound just to our west, you get a look inside Lumen Field here in Seattle, Washington. Coming up, we got a good matchup on tap here as it will be the defending NFC champions, the Philadelphia Eagles, taking on the Seattle Seahawks. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, this was a team after the Russell Wilson trade that looked like they might be bottoming out. But for years, the Seahawks have had great success in the NFL draft, as you well know. And they've used the last few drafts to really restock this roster. And they certainly have restocked this roster and have gotten back to playing football the way that they want to do it. Seahawks football, which means running the ball with authority on offense. They've added runners, offensive linemen, and now they're just being forceful in the way they're going about their business, the way that they did it when they ran the Super Bowls. Well, meanwhile, for the Eagles, the big question, how would they improve their squad in 2023 and make another run at a Super Bowl title? Well, they took a few hits in free agency, but by most accounts, really hit a home run during April's draft. You were there. What did you make of it? It was almost a night beyond their wildest dreams. Perhaps the best player in the draft somehow fell to nine where the Eagles traded up to get him. And a terrific pass rusher they got at 30. Wonderful draft, extra pieces for a Super Bowl contender. Here's the kicker, Jason Myers, to get this one started. And off we go from Seattle. And this taken in at the goal line. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. So here come the Eagles, the defending NFC champs, led out by a man who was the runner-up to Patrick Mahomes at MVP balloting a season ago. Of course, that's Jalen Hurts. Tremendous production in college at two different universities, and this is a guy who was a finalist for the Heisman Trophy. Still much more of a runner than a thrower, but has plenty of arm and is capable of making the big throws downfield. And don't underestimate his ability to think the game. Remember, he's the son of a coach. And he ran right through one tackle as he fights forward for a gain of seven. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. And this is going to be an Eagles first down as he's got this up to the 28-yard line. On first and 10, it's Swift. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. It's an Eagles first down on a gain of 11. That's a very nice game there. A confidence building run. Love the execution up front. And the way he pressed the hole, absolutely perfect. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Throwing his hurts. He'll get this one complete. That's A.J. Brown. And he'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. So after several rushes to start the game, Charles, they go to the air there and get a nice completion. Nice mix-up on the play calling, right? Establish the running game, make the defense think you're going to do it again, and then hit them over the top. Now you've got them betwixt and between. They don't know which way you're going to come at them. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Now hang on here because DeAndre Swift injured on that last play and in need of a little assistance. The medical staff will attend to him and we will step aside. This now a third and four. Here's Hurts to throw. And that'll be dumped off to Gainwell. And brought down, but not before he was able to break the tackle and the extra effort moves the sticks. Give him the third down conversion, five yards on the play. 
I'm not sure that that was necessarily a safety valve or a check down throw on third down. Sometimes just try and find the open guy and get him the ball. He did exactly that and found a way to pick up a first down. They'll run for the first time with Kenneth Gainwell. And he maneuvers up the middle for three. And it's second down. From the 47 now to work with a second and seven. Hertz sets up to throw it. And that nearly an interception here on its opening drive, but he gets a reprieve. It's third down. Nice play on the football. The ball was tipped in the air and made everyone a little bit anxious before falling to the ground. You just know defensive players are taught to knock the ball to the ground. But early in games, emotions come into play. Nerves come into play. And despite the training, the ball was tipped up. Fortunately for them, they didn't pay for that error. The Eagle passing game looking good on this drive. It's a first down. Well, on third down, he wanted to go to one of his most dependable targets, and that's who he found, his tight end there, to pick up the first, Charles. And he used the proper word there, dependable, and sometimes spectacular, because tight ends nowadays, they can do it all. But they're the guys you trust, especially across the middle of the field where there's traffic. He delivers, and they pick up nice yardage. They go play action with Hurts. He delivers another to Goddard, complete. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. So the completion good for six yards, and it'll be second down. Hurts. Five yards on the scramble, and that's enough to pick up the first. As he came to the line of scrimmage, he knew he didn't need much to reset the chain, so when he saw the space he needed, no hesitation. He went to the marker and got his guys a first down. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Off the play fake, here's Hertz. He finds his tight end, Goddard, that's complete. And able to get this down inside the 15, either the 13 or 14, before he's out of bounds. Well, that's not just his first, not his second, already his third completion here on the opening drive. And I, I think it's safe to say that getting him the ball in this game, one of their top priorities. And a top priority for the defense has got to be finding ways to cover him. And I don't think you can have one basic coverage to get it done. You have to throw a number of coverages at him, make him think as he's running downfield, and hope you can create a little bit of havoc. Yeah, the Eagles are going to have a first and goal as he's taken down at about the eight-yard line. And how about this first drive? They're being aggressive, slinging it around. Really confident, too, because they're not trying to fool them with running plays, throwing it, and they're being very successful right now. They're going to look to throw. Touchdown, Eagles. Eight yards on the touchdown pass. And the Eagles get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. We're still in the first quarter, but it's apparent they're going to have to come up with a different defensive game plan for him because right now he's kind of having his way against that defense and has added a touchdown to the list. How do you slow him down? They're going to have to mix up some coverages, maybe change who's guarding him. On for the extra point, Jake Elliott. He's got it, and the Eagles lead at 7-0. That one was an extended drive, 14 plays all told. And the drive was all finished off on the touchdown catch by Dallas Goddard. To the touchdown. Here's Elliott on to kick it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. 
So the Seahawks ready to take over on offense, and it is a first-time Pro Bowler who leads him out, Charles, in his 11th year now, Geno Smith. I still remember back in 2013 when he was drafted out of West Virginia, he was coming off a of back-to-back 4,000-yard seasons for the Mountaineers. Hadn't seen as much game time in recent years, but at one point, a capable starter in the NFL. They run on first down as they're able to get this forward for about four. Second down and six now from the 26. Smith now to throw. He'll fire one downfield for Fan. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. That sun's going to be a factor all game long. I'm not sure it made a difference on that one, but it's something to think about on all deep throws during this time of year. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Smith. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And already down seven to nothing after the touchdown a minute ago. So a three and out here would not be ideal for them. Nice job finding his receiver there. And they get the first down. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Geno now to throw. And that one going to be off target and incomplete. Well, he certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and 10. Up the middle they run, it's Walker. And he's got some space here. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That burst, good for 20 and a first down. That looked like a two-deep coverage, which we call cover two. And what that really means is you have corners, what we call rolled up in about a five-yard area on the outside receivers. Then your safeties are back closer to the hash marks near the middle of the field, somewhere around 10 to 12 yards back. So if you can break through the first level, you've got a chance to run. And a loose fumble. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, and that could have been trouble. And defensively, maybe an opportunity miss there. No doubt about it. When that ball's out, all you're thinking about as a defender is, this is our chance to make a huge play. Instead, he's able to recover his own fumble. And Big usually, sigh of relief, huh? Yeah, usually those wide receiver fumbles, there's open space around for the defense, but not there. He hops right back on it. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. They'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one, forced the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Frees up your guys elsewhere. To throw on second down is Smith. And he's got Smith and Jigba. And he gets us one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. 23 yards, the pick up there. That's a nice catch there. Remember, he had the fumble earlier. No way he was giving up the ball in that situation. Secured it tight to his body and picks up the first down. Now a first and 10 at the 11. To the air again, Smith. Going right back to Smith and Jigba. Call it a gain of three on the play, and that'll make it second down. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. The ball on the eight still could get a first down technically. Second and seven. Up the middle, here's Walker. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Give him two yards on that play, and it'll be third down. Throwing now is Gino. Caught on the slant. 
that he won't quite make it. He needed six. He got about five. Fourth down. If this were baseball, we'd call this small ball. Instead of pushing it downfield, they throw a short pass trying to pick up the first down, but the defense rallies to the football and stops him short, bringing up a fourth down. And no move to get the offense off the field. They'll stay put on fourth and one. Here we go on fourth. Smith. He finds Smith and Jimbo in the end zone for a Seahawks touchdown. A one-yard touchdown pass. And the Seahawks respond to that opening drive touchdown with one of their own. Partner, are they going to cover him? That's four catches and the touchdown grab on that opening drive. But what we're seeing so far, I believe, is their understanding that they want to go to him and often, but also they know they've got to move him around a little bit, get him into some different spots to continue to find open space to throw him the football. Otherwise, I just run two or three guys at him. They're doing a nice job of finding his way open, scheming him, as they like to say. Extra point open through by Myers, and we are tied at seven. team has scored 7-7 seven, seven here as the kicks away taken at the goal line and out a little across the 25 to the 27 so back onto the field here come the Eagles for their second drive so both of these teams Charles coming off touchdowns now but this offense they just had to stand on the sideline watch their opponent offer a really impressive drive to reach the end zone yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. Second and five. Running right, this is Gamewell. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. 14 yards there and an eagle first down. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they had three tight ends in on that sack. And these guys are punching really well. I use boxing analogies a lot. A lot of coaches have told me that when you line up to run the football, it's 10 fist fights along the line of scrimmage, right? You've got to win your share. These three tight ends, they almost always win. Pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawk defense. Flying in to pick up that sack, Jordan Brooks. And this is what you've got to do against a quarterback like him. You've got to keep him in the pocket and not let him get to the perimeter because once he gets outside, that's where he can really hurt you. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Another try after the first down sack. Hurts. He'll check this one down to Gainwell. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And that'll make it third and 13. Zacchaeus and taking it across midfield and inside the 45 his first catch good for 14 there and a first down I know this may be jumping the gun a little bit but seven to seven they're flinging it around like crazy look at the drive that's going on here partner we may have to start thinking about one of these defenses just holding someone to a field goal and maybe trying to get advantage that one but first down hurts He'll find Gainwell out of the backfield. And he is going to lose yardage here. These two teams all tied after one. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Eagles in possession. Second and 11, as they've got it as we resume action. 
Play action. Here's Hurts. Open man is Goddard to tight end. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks 16. 28 yards the gain there on the catch and run. For many teams, the evaluation of tight ends has really changed. We used to wonder about how they would block first and foremost. Now we want to know how these guys can run because we envision them in offenses, catch the ball, how much yardage can they gain after that? And that on display there for a good pickup. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Touchdown, Eagles! Jalen Hurts finding A.J. Brown, and the Eagles have taken the lead. Partner, remember that old film of Peyton Manning going through the route tree with his great receivers in Indianapolis? I think we're seeing the results of the same type of work here today. These guys know each other so well, they don't even have to call the play. They can just look each other and know the route that's going to be run, and usually the connection is perfect. Elliott good on the extra point, and that makes the score 14-7. to seven. So that drive in total eight plays, and it's capped off by an A.J. Brown touchdown. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. This taken in right around the goal line. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field ready for their second drive. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partners, a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now, but let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. Yeah, because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. That was a really nice run there to bring up third and short. After the incompletion on first down, it's awfully nice to have a running back that you can hand it to and put you back in a good situation. Smith on third down. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man to play. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. They'll fake it. Now Smith. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. Good defensive call right there because they had someone shadowing him along his entire route. And he was right there ready to provide a hit that prevents him from making another catch to his big start. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and ten. Now Gino. Walker with the grab, left side. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. Boy, he ran free there after the catch as that winds up going for 38. Well, partner, that's how you make a long drive suddenly. Not so long anymore. One big play, and they're already in field goal range with designs on getting more than that. So a big play as it gets them all the way down to the 20 now for first and 10. From the red zone now, Smith. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. 
That was a nice job defensively of disguising their coverage and making it difficult for the quarterback to lock in on a receiver, and it results in an incomplete pass. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Straight ahead, Walker. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Throwing is Smith. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Fourth down now looming after Philly's defense stands tall in coverage. But that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. And on third down, they said, forget about the sticks. We want six. Myers' kick is good. And they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. So they put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown, but that's actually okay. They got three points, able to give their defense a little bit of rest, let them settle down over there. So all in all to me, that's a good drive. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Jalen Hurts in this offense trotting back out. The last series, the ball never hit the ground. Six of six, touchdown pass, so whatever he did then, do it again, right? Yeah, it reminds me a lot of when I watched the best quarterbacks throw seven on seven, or even routes versus air. They're accurate. The receivers catch it. The ball never touches the ground. Or if you want to take it to basketball, a well-executed fast break, right? Pass, 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 finish at the rim, basket. Yeah, the ball never hits the ground there either. Now how about this throw right here? Had to throw it to the left sideline, and you know the timing's got to be correct on this one. Ball's got to be right where it needs to be, and it was. That's because he had great arm strength on that one, able to drive the football. Quarterbacks love it when they can show off their arms. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Second down at six now from the 42. They go play action with Hertz. Pass to Brown. He's got it on the crossing route. Yeah, that's good for a gain of six, and they'll be faced with a third and inches. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out in the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. Boy, no chance as he was met and dropped behind the line there. That'll back him up two yards and also bring up fourth. They tried to run right into the teeth of the defense on third down, but um, looked like those teeth were pretty sharp. <laughs> <laughs> they were having absolutely none of it stuffed them for a loss. Yeah, couldn't get any leverage up front and move people aside in order to run the ball. On fourth down, punt coming from Braden Mann. Ball now going back over the Seattle Seahawks offense. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive down with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Walker now on first and ten. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. 
On that play, it was the defensive front that won the battle. They outleveraged the offensive line, got into the backfield, and held them to no gain. Second and 10. Back to throw, Smith. And he short arms that one just a bit. It's low and incomplete. Tyler Lockett was the target there. And it'll bring up third down. Now it's Smith. He lets it fly for Lockett. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. So one first down on that drive, and that's it. Forced to take the deep shot on third down and couldn't hit it. Now they have to punt this one away. The Seahawks will call on Michael Dixon on fourth down to punt this one away. Britton Covey deep for Philadelphia. It's taken to the 26. So a good punt there, but a very strong 14-yard return. And it will be Eagles football first and 10. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs. And let's face it, they know how to finish plays too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. Back to Gainwell here on second down. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. He came out ready to play. That's three tackles for a loss, Charles, only in the second quarter. And that's problematic for the guys trying to run offense because that means he's got a pretty good idea of what they're doing and is actually beating them to the point of attack and making those plays. You might have to think about some misdirection or something to try and get him away from the ball. Well, he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. And that one results in 35 yards. This is what made the West Coast offense a staple around the NFL in the 80s and 90s. You don't have to push the ball deep downfield to come up with big plays. And there's an example of that right there. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Here's Hurts to throw. Four step, and he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Daryl Taylor got in there to drop him. I know there'll be a little bit of criticism there because they went right back to the air after the huge pickup and ended up getting sacked. That's often a play that you make. You feel like you've got momentum on your side. Unfortunately, the O-line failed to hold up to try to keep that momentum going. Off the play fake. Here's Hurts. And that'll be dumped off to Gainwell. No gain on the play, and it'll bring up a third down. That's a nice job defensively to make sure everyone was accounted for because ordinarily, you pick up the guys downfield, and sometimes you forget about the running back. In this case, they did not and dropped him for no gain. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Just what Seattle was hoping for, the coverage holds. And now fourth down. Well, we've seen him catch a few passes out of the backfield in the first half, unable to connect on that one. Certainly seems like getting him the ball out of the passing game, though, is part of their game plan. It certainly is because he catches it well, creates a mismatch. You're going to cover him with a linebacker, a corner, a safety. They feel like he can win every battle. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted. But I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yep. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Well, and now those 50-plus yarders seem easy for some reason.
After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. Taking it about the one. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. And the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. They find themselves down 17-10 as they come up on a first and 10. Now a play fake, and it's Smith. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, did a little toe tap to stay inbounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. Ball on the 40 now. Here's second and six. Now Smith. Catch is made by Metcalf. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. A gear for Walker running right. Taken down at the 47-yard line. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Second and seven. From the gun, here's Smith. Left side, he finds Smith and Jigba. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. This is third and one. Very likely four down territory, even if they don't get it, though. A shotgun snap for Smith. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. On fourth down, ready to punt Michael Dixon. And now on fourth and one, it's a fake. And this is caught. And the gamble pays off. They get the first. How about them biting off 15 yards there on the fourth down attempt and keeping the drive alive? And they were right in that gray area on the edge of long field goal range, maybe too short to punt it. So the defense probably was expecting this was a possibility. They should have been. And in most cases, what you do on defense is you go to what they call punt safe. In other words, you leave your defense on the field, prepare for them to possibly go for it, and then you just have a little bit different responsibilities. You're not really trying to get a big return. You just want to make sure you get the ball back. But they fell asleep at the switch. That's complete to his running back, Dallas. It'll go as a gain of four at its second down. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. Throwing again is Smith. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. They're putting together a drive here in the final minutes of the half, but the coverage has been tight all game long, and they certainly want to keep them off the scoreboard here. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Throwing now is Gino. That is caught. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half.
Here's a first and 10 at the 14 yard line. To throw is Smith. And complete to Smith and Jigba. So the completion good for just three. And that will bring up second down. Now another timeout called for by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Seven yards left for second down. Ball at the 10. Gino now to throw. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone for the Seahawks touchdown. Noah Fant from 10 yards out. And the Seahawks are an extra point away from tying the ball game here in the final minute of the first half. After nearly 30 minutes of football, that touchdown puts us in a position where if they make the extra point, we're right back to even before we start the second half. Now Myers for the extra point. And he gets it to go, and we're all even. 17 apiece. So that drive, 12 plays in length. And it's Noah Fan who counts things off with the touchdown. Seventeen, seventeen. the score. All even to this point as the kick's away. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. And the Eagles going to get one final possession in this first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. But first down, Hurts. Got a man, it's Brown. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. The Eagles gonna take the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Hurt sets up to throw it. This will be caught once again by Brown. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Hurts. This will be caught by Brown. And he's taken down inside the 30. Now a signal and a timeout call as it comes with nine seconds to go in this first half of play. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. Made his first. This now from 46 yards away. The kick by Elliott is good. And with that, they take the lead here 20 to 17. So we will not go into the lockers tied. We do have a leader in the clubhouse, so to speak. Yeah, it's only three points. Doesn't seem like much, but it looms big the way that they got it done right before the half ended. So six seconds, all that remains of this first half is the kick is away. 
and makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23 yard line. He'll take the knee in the final couple seconds. will tick by in this first half. So we've reached halftime here, and it's our visitors, the Eagles, leading this one. As we'll send you back over to Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report, here's Jonathan Coachman. All right, Brandon, back to you too in just a bit. But first, welcome everyone to downtown Orlando and our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Coach, This one's thanks. been as good yeah, as ever. Just to make a some field field changes in rating these two teams. This is a very this level point. first half, and I'd expect to see more of the same after the break. It's been a shootout so far. We'll see which defense can make the adjustments as we get back underway in the second half. DJ Dallas to return it from his end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The Seahawk offense set to go to begin this third quarter. Well, Charles, in that first half, we saw a fair amount of offense on both sides of the football, and now the team trailing here will start with it in the third quarter. And we both know this coach pretty darn well, don't we? Because his game planning is always on point. And now that he's getting the ball to start the second half, how about all the offense that you already referenced in the first half? He'll put that all together, come out with something really strong, I believe, to get things going here in the third quarter. Here's a second and eight. Sticking with Walker on second down. And not too much going there as he'll get it up to the 23-yard line. They follow up the gain of two with a gain of one that time. Here comes third down and seven. Out of the gun, Smith. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. It's a gain of 15, first down Seahawks. Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Smith. He hits his target, Lockett. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Two catches in the first half. Now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. They'll fake it. Now Smith. Throw right side here, going to be incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and ten. Now Gino. He completes this to Walker. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. That's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, sure tackle. If they want a first, they need to get the football to the 32 here on third down. Smith. He's got his target. That's complete. And he has another first down as he'll get the ball down to the Eagles 17-yard line. No question that they're going to continue to look his way. Six catches in the first half and now seven on the game. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? 
after able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage so many of these slot guys i think have running back in their background so from the 17 now here's a first and 10 from the red zone now smith toward the end zone but that's gonna wind up incomplete Now a second and ten. Running right, here's Walker. And he'll be stopped after a gain of only a couple down to the 15-yard line. Now we're going to get a timeout here as it looks like there's a Seahawk injured on the play. But the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. Third and eight. Here's Smith. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. It's a pickup of 15 and a fresh set of downs. I think he has to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, he just did the tip of the ball across the plane. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape with first and goal. Walker will score. Touchdown, Seattle. A solid blocking up front from the guys on the offensive line allowed him to get in for the touchdown. Yeah, some might say that the guys on the offensive line were in concert. I used to have a coach who called it marrying up. Meaning, when you get on a guy, you just stay right there. and Each guy has his own assignment that allowed the runner to make the big move towards the end zone. The extra point now coming from Myers. And that will make this a four-point game. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it was Ken Walker finishing things off with a touchdown run. to boot it away. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. So here are the Eagles now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. And Charles, it feels like we're set up for a good second half here. Came out of the locker room, one score game. Now the lead has already changed hands. Well, this offense, they've got an opportunity right now to take that lead right back. Yeah, and it feels like you're going back and forth almost a little bit like a tennis match, right? And we're just, you know, our heads just keep moving. Which side has it? Which side's going to score? How are they going to go out doing it? A little bit of a challenge for each side trying to match each other. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Throwing his hurts. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. A big play there on the catch and run. 59 yards. Every defensive staff harps on limiting explosive plays. <laughs> Job not so well done there. Yeah, they talk about it all the time. A lot harder to stop, though, isn't it? And when you think of an explosive play, most offensive staffs define them as passes of 20 or more yards and runs of 15 or more yards. They went zooming past that number there. So barely time to catch our breath. Here's first and 10 just outside the red zone. All the option to give to Swift here. And able to work his way down to the 16. Personal foul. Face map. Defense. Stay the last side. So they'll get the yardage on the run and get 15 more for good measure. Yeah, that wasn't too difficult to spot. You heard the sideline erupting, and the flags came out almost immediately. 
So the face mask moves him closer, and now first and goal. Here's Hurts to throw. Over the middle to Smith. A gain of seven that time. Second goal. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. And this is caught. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Grant Calcaterra, a one-yard touchdown reception. And the Eagles have retaken a third-quarter lead. So second and goal there from the one, they go to the air. And the perfect down to throw the football in this sequence. Second down is always kind of that, do they throw it, do they run it? They worked it out to perfection on that one by throwing it into the end zone. Elliott on for the extra point. And that one gives him a three-point lead. A drive there of just four plays. The result, Philadelphia in the end zone. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. Dallas now to return it from his end zone. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. They had seized the lead there for a little bit with a starting drive in the third quarter, but a moment ago, the touchdown that puts them back behind. So their defense is under siege a little bit right now because they have not able to solve their opponents. So they've got to keep hammering away on offense and try and win this one in what appears to be a shootout. It was Josh Schwett who got him down on the defensive side. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. Back to throw, Smith. To the sideline and incomplete. But that's a defense coordinator's got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. They had the incomplete pass on second down. Now they need a big play here, third and 10. Now Smith. He lets it fly for Lockett. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. There is something to a game plan with trying to keep a defense honest with a guy with that type of speed. You do so. Send him deep. Try to throw some air under it and hope you connect downfield. On that play, they were unsuccessful. Now here's Michael Dixon on presumably to punt, though he did complete a pass earlier. 46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. Fielded at the 33. It's a 45-yard punt, six yards on the return. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Now second and nine. They go play action with Hertz. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Had to do a double take on that one, Brandon, because so far in this game, we haven't seen Mavis pass his ball incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Back to throw. And he nearly got the first himself, but it appears he's going to be about a yard or two short. Offense. 
So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. It'll wind up just a 35-yard punt, no return, and it'll be Seahawk football as they take over deep in their own territory. Now Smith and the Seahawks going to come up first and 10 at their own 13. Hands it to Walker to begin the series. And there to stop him, Shaquille Leonard, the linebacker. They work now on second and nine. Sticking with Walker on second down. And he's brought down, but not before a really nice stiff arm to create a little space. 55 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Third and three. Throwing now is Gino. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. We sit in quarter number three out in Seattle, a second and 10 now. On the counter, it's Walker. Not much there, maybe a couple up to the 35. Here now a third down and eight. Throwing is Smith. Throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. The frustration evident there because he couldn't find anyone on third down, and he left no doubt that he was throwing that one away. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. Seven-yard punt, a return of four. And they will take over first and ten. The Eagles coming out as they get ready. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. So from the 26-yard line, here's second and two. They'll drop to throw. And that'll fall incomplete. He was hit just as he let that go. And now it's third down. And when you're in a one-score game in the second half, now's not the time to force the puck on the places where you shouldn't. And that's a smart decision to just get that one out of there. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. And they'll send the tight end in motion here. They'll try and run here with Swift. He's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. The defense stiffens to force fourth down following that first down gain of eight. Picked a good time to blitz. Left the ball carrier with no options. Reminds me of our production meeting with the defensive coordinator. What did he tell us? When we're playing the game right, we dictate the terms. I think we just saw a terrific example of it, didn't we? On is the punter man as he boots this one away. 
Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. They'll run with Walker to begin the drive. And he'll get a few yards here to the 34. Second and seven, operating from the 34. Sticking with Walker on second down. And he'll get about two there to the 36. They'll come up facing third and five. Gino now to throw. And that is incomplete. Well, how about the coverage we just saw break out on third down? Dime defense, blanketed the field with extra defensive backs and speed, unable to find an open hole to complete that pass. Now here's Michael Dixon as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 18-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and 10 here. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And this one complete to Smith. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. 14 yards there and an eagle first down. As they began this drive, I was wondering how they were going to attack since they're playing with the lead. Would they continue to try and push the ball downfield? Well, after one play, it appears that the answer is yes. They will run straight ahead with Swift. And he'll be taken down after a minimal pickup, and that will take us to the end of quarter number three. So both teams trade touchdowns, and the third is worth through three quarters of play. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Seattle, Washington. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. Seven catches for him now in this last one. A first down. Well, a clear running situation. Try to take time off the clock. He ran the previous play. Set that play action up nicely. Boy, did they ever, because they had shown the ability to run the football. So now you lose your keys as a defense. You dive for the running play, and they hit him over the top. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Hurt sets up to throw it. He delivers another to Goddard, complete. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. They go right back to him for 20 and a first. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as... I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. On first and 10, it's Hurts. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. This short throw caught by Goddard. That helps the completion percentage, but not much else. And now it's third and 10. But he caught it right at the line of scrimmage. And before he could even think about advancing it forward, he got hit. Great tackling, because that's what you're taught. Don't give up yards after the catch. And most offenses make a living off of yards after catch. Those hidden yards that may not go into the score sheet, but they count big for moving the ball and stretching the field. Really nice open field tackle. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it within an eyelash. Dropped at the one. 
They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Beautiful throw right there on third down, and it looked like this was going to be six points, but a nice touchdown-saving tackle at the end of this. Even still, this offense is knocking on the door now with a first and goal at the one. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. Swift. Diving for the end zone, and he'll get there. Touchdown. And as a defensive coordinator, you're almost in a no-win situation down here near the goal line. You know how dangerous Jalen Hurts is when he holds on to it. You've got to be prepared to stay with him. So when he hands it off, if you're slow and reacting, this is going to be the result. Elliott now to add the extra point. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. So that drive goes eight plays, and it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. And this taken in at the goal line. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. The Seahawks offense now, they get set to go back to work. And the script really is flipped for them. The momentum on the other sideline, and now they have to try and battle back from a two-score deficit. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. And they'll come up second and seven. Here's Smith. Smith and Jigbo hauling it in on the out route. A one-yard gain there following the three-yard pickup on first down. Timing is everything, and they work on this cut all the time. They work on all the timing patterns, and this time it paid off for them. Worked into the center of the field, cut it to the outside, ball's delivered, gets both feet down for the completion. Now Smith. Going right back to Smith and Jigba. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. These two have hooked up nine times now this afternoon as they pick up the first. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Dallas up the middle. And this will be a Seahawks first down as he'll get this up to about the 42. The running game fully in sync, 1-11 to 11 on that play. And sometimes it comes from the offensive coordinator understanding what he thinks the defense is going to do and dialing up the perfect play. Sometimes the quarterback, though, can look at the defense, realize he needs to change it to a run, and that gets it done in a big way as well. A quick throw out to Lockett. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. He was unable to shake free there. They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. But well, looked like the defense, they were ready for that one. Really left him almost no room to work after catching the ball. He could throw every move in the book at him. They were there, and they tackle him for a loss. To throw is Smith. To the right side and complete to Metcalf. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. First down Seattle on a pickup of 13. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple scores, and they've really got to get some yards in chunks, and they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Will Disley, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. Get 
Now Gino. Short throw to Disley. Five yards. Now it's third and five. We always hear from coaches how much they like to run crossing routes because they want to hit their receivers on the go, get them the ball, keep them moving. How about when you hit a tight end that way? Okay, the receivers are going to run past you most of the time. The tight end, they can do their damage a different way, break a few tackles and really scatter some people, can't they? From the gun on third down, Smith. That is caught. And he gets us down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. Maybe a critical mistake at this juncture is now they've got a first and ten. To the right side, this is Walker. And he'll take it from the 18 to the 15, a gain of three. Here's second and seven. Sticking with Walker on second down. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. And still about three yards shy of a first as the four yard pickup brings it to third down. Now it's Smith. And unable to connect. If he had caught it, it would have been a first down. Instead, it's fourth. I wonder, Brandon, I just wonder. You think maybe he was worried about where he was on the field? Was he far enough? Was he close enough to the first down sticks? Absolutely. He was right there by him, and I think he was thinking first down before he caught that football. Yeah, got to catch it first, because if you don't catch it, there's no chance of picking up a first down. Myers' kick is good, and this is back down to a seven-point game. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. now converted on the field goal try now he's on to kick it away this fielded right at the goal line and he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20 Philadelphia's offense ready to give us another look their lead back down to one score after the field goal a moment ago so they'll be looking to string together a few first downs likely on the ground as they begin first and ten He's got Smith here. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Here's second and four from the 24. Throwing his hurts. Smith on the out route and it's caught. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. Hurts finding Smith for the Philly first. That's a pretty throw right there. That ball's in the air a long time, but it's right on the money on the right sideline. A really good route. Moving the defenders towards the middle of the field before breaking to the sideline. What a completion there. Big time arm strength. Very nice route. But it's caught on the right side at Smith. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. 11 more on that one, and another first down. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going, and right now, it's paying off with big chunks of yardage, as shown by that last play. One thing we know about RPO throws, they don't take long to develop. He had him wide open to the outside, hit him with it, I think his eyes were looking downfield trying to see that open grass. Ends up dropping it. That's a missed opportunity. Here's second and ten.
In motion, the tight end. On second down, Swift. And he's up across midfield and down into Seattle territory. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game now? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? Uh, I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. This short throw caught by Goddard, and he is going to have an Eagles first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. They bring pressure there on third down, but this is a nice job of picking it up and making sure their guy has time to deliver the football. And they wind up getting the first down. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. Here's Hurts to throw. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Oh, that's some good closing speed there defensively because that looked open for a minute. But that's great work with the ball in the air. Never gave up. Converged on his man and broke the play up. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Off the play fake. Here's Hurts. Zaki is here holding it in. And that will wind up moving the chains again as the tackle is going to be made at the Seahawks 15-yard line. 27 yards there. A first down. Charles, he's now over 400 yards passing in this one. It feels like he has a zillion completions. Just a very memorable effort from a guy that we thought could be in line for a big game, and he has exceeded our expectations. That he has, and I'm not really surprised at all because when you look at this offensive unit, they are loaded across the board. And, of course, the guy throwing them, he's a big-time player himself. They brought it from start to finish and really helped get the better of the opposing secondary. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Able to stay in bounds, so the clock keeps rolling. And this defense right now backed up in the red zone. Another touchdown. It's over. They've got to stand tall quickly. Been in this spot before. Now there's a little bit of desperation creeping in. And all you're doing when you're talking to your defensive teammates is first guy there, hold him up. Second, third guy in, rake it the football. Get it out. We've got to create a turnover. There's one more score, and this game's over. final two minutes and we've got a one score game so it's eagle football here as we get your reset this is a big third down and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop them here flushed out right so fresh out of the two minute warning and here's another timeout taken with 155 remaining So a big, big kick coming now for Jake Elliott. This to perhaps salt this one away. The kick by Elliott is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So that one, CD, going to make the road back a lot more difficult. Oh, there's no doubt about that. You know they were praying on the other sideline for a miss because now, as you pointed out, a very difficult road. Down two scores. You don't just need a touchdown. You need a chain of events to go your way. You've got to score, somehow get the ball back, and score again. The odds of that happening, not great in your favor. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. So Geno and the Seahawks down by 10. A minute 52 to play. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Smith's going to throw it. Gets this complete to Smith and Jigba. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. They come up now on second and two. Up, up. 
Smith. He'll get that complaint to Parkinson. Two timeouts still remaining, but scoring quickly, a must. It's first and 10. Throwing there, but this pass is gonna wind up incomplete. Whew, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. Here's second down. Here's Smith. Fighting Smith and Jigba downfield. And he has another first down as they'll get the ball down to the Eagles' 38-yard line. Clock running, and the Seahawks, they're running too, trying to speed up to the line of scrimmage. Smith to throw. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts. As the clock stops here with 46 seconds left to play. Here's second and a yard. Now it's Smith. Short throw to Dip. Oh no, he lost the football. And now this ball picked up by the offense. But here in the final two minutes of the game, this will be blown dead. Only the fumbler can advance the football. So this will go back to the spot of the fumble itself. Here's first down. Smith. And that is incomplete. 16 seconds now on the clock. Now the question is obvious. Do you try to kick the field goal right here knowing that you need two scores? I would be thinking about if I were on that sideline. Get the field goal now, try and get the touchdown later. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and 10. Throwing now is Geno. This is caught. And now here comes their final timeout as they take it with eight ticks remaining. Here's first and goal. Smith now to throw to the goal line, but it's incomplete. Well, you know they're gonna look his way in the two minute drill, but that time he was blanketed and they forced the incompletion. May need some teammates to step up in this spot. Another shot from the one on second and goal. One last throw here for Smith. And this is caught, so it's a late touchdown, but maybe too late. Still a little time left on the clock, however. Problem for them, they needed that score with a little more time left on the clock. I think just too little, too late now. I would agree with that, and we're programmed never to say never. But in this case, we're asking a lot for them to even think they have a chance. Myers connects on the PAT. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. So with just a few ticks left, they need a miracle. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a capper on this one. They had to go for it with no timeouts remaining, though, now. This one's as good as over. 
They gave it an effort. They tried their best, did everything they could to try and get the ball on the onside kick. You're exactly right. They had to try it. It was their only option. And now this game is done. Just take it, kneel, and call it a day. So no shortage of offense in this game, but a very clean game too, Charles. Each side got its points, but they did so without committing a single turnover. That's so true, and it certainly felt like NFL football at its finest, right? You talk about the highest level from both of these offenses. Neither one of them afraid of taking risks, and both of them.